Hey, everybody out there in podcast land, this is your host of Firecast, Severin Henderson, as presented by Department 3C. And today's episode is one with a fellow Chicago Fire Department member, Antoine Dobson. He's an officer on the department right now, he's going to rank up for another promotion. That's what he's studying for. Um, and we just had an opportunity to sit down and talk about all things fire department. He has a amazing journey that he took to get to the fire department. We talk about that. He had a feature on CBS News um, where they talked about how he got on the fire department, some of the people he knows, some of the people he's met. He's met, And all of that information is just inside the podcast. It's a pretty good episode, if I do say so myself. And I hope you enjoy it. With that being said, and without further ado, please enjoy the episode with Antoine Dobson. Hey everybody out there in podcast land, this is your host, Severin Henderson, with another episode of Firecast, hosted by me, Severin Henderson. I already said that, so. Um, <laughs> today, I'm doing a podcast with Antoine Dobson. Um, Antoine, uh, he reached out to me, he was like, hey, you got that super podcast going on, let me get in on that. And we had already talked about doing it from before, um, we just didn't get the opportunity to link up, but this time we did, so I'm really happy about that. On top of that, um, he's going to do some writing for me on my blog, he he knows it already, so it's not like a, a forced thing, he, he already knows it. Yeah, I, I, I knew it about five seconds ago. <laughs> nah, right, he, okay, no, I'm just playing, I'm yeah. kidding, I'm kidding, yeah, we, we did talk about it's it. It's all good. We did talk about it. Um, So, without further ado, without hearing too much of me, Antoine, introduce yes. yourself to the people. How are you today, sir? I'm great, thank you for having me. Um, Antoine Dobson, uh, I'm in my 18th year, Chicago Fire Department. I am a lieutenant paramedic, 5th District Relief, which means that I don't have a home. Or you can consider I have many homes. Yeah, so wherever I, like I go, wherever I lay my head, that's my home for that for that particular platoon. Um, how can I say? I came on a job as a single role paramedic. I uh, crossed over about a year and some change later. I was on Amherst 10 when I first came on the job. Proud to say that was the busiest Amherst in the city, second busiest in the country. Mm -hmm. It's still kind of holding that rank, over 8,000 calls a year. Mm -hmm. um, then I went to Engine 38, which at the time was between number one and number two business in the city on the west side, born and raised in the west side as Not well. Not just engine, but overall company. Company. Over, yeah, co yeah, just overall. Engine, truck, Whatever. 38 was number one. Between them and 116, it was always a battle right. of being number one and number two. Right. right. Of just runs, which is ridiculous, but it is, it is what it is. So, like you said, um, from the West Side, born and raised. Talk to me more about that, please. So, I am um, born and raised on the West Side of Chicago, uh, Jackson, in California, Merrillac House. Uh, with many, well, several Bulls players come out of like Merrillac House of the Ball. Matter of fact, part of the documentary on um, the Last Dance mm -hmm. with Michael Jordan, that outside court, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's Merrillac House right there on Jackson, in California. Mm -hmm. Uh, Orlando Woodridge, mm -hmm. uh, Isaiah Thomas, mm -hmm. and to, just to name a few. Um, foster kid, you know, I was in. I wasn't a quote unquote warder to the state, but another family raised me. That's a whole other story, which led me to the discovery of my uh, my love and passion for the fire service. Mm -hmm. So the way that got started was I was a kid in a summer camp. And one of the trips was to a firehouse, and I believe it was Engine 103, right on the South Loop, like Laughlin and Madison. Yep. And something just literally, like an enigma, it just happened. Like, it just hit me. I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. The moment I walked in the firehouse, I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. It was more than just the average boy saying, I want to be a policeman, I want to be a fireman. No, yeah. I was like, no, this is for real, yeah. right? yeah. So, lo and behold, I my when I got a little bit older, I found out that my aunt, who's now passed away, lived about four or five blocks from Engine 107. Mm -hmm. So she lived on the 700 block of South California. 107 is 1101 South California. Mm -hmm. So I used to, you know, just walk down the street, hope, wishing, and praying, and I used to literally just look in the firehouse. It was summertime; the doors were up. 
but I never went in. I was kind of scared. And then one of his engineer by the name of Mark Nielsen, he was mm-hmm. an engineer assigned to 107 third shift. He was uh, washing the rig, and he looks back at me and go, hey, you always walking around here. You want to come in? I go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was, man, I was hyped. I was, you know, I, I was, yeah, I was, I was thirsty. Yeah. But it wasn't for free. Okay. He threw a rag at me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what, what? And that's how you know that's, that's the welcome to the fire service. You want to be part of us, you got to work your way in, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I, uh, you know, helped him drive off the fire engine. He was showing me around the fire engine. Let me, you know, sit in the, in the, the cab of the rig. And that time it was the 107 was an open cab Ford E1 with the stick shift. Oh, okay. So that's how far back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. went. Um, and uh, I got to know the other shifts. I was hanging around. Then I started hanging around second shift. Mm-hmm. So I can say it now because he's retired. So the first officer to let me ride a rig, I was a, what we call a fan. You're not supposed to let fans ride, but, you know, that's old school. But yeah, it's yeah, old school. yeah was Milt Davenport. Okay. His son is Dave Davenport, that you may or may yes. not know. Yes, yes, Captain who's about to retire Yep. next month. So he got to retire the same rank as his dad. His yes. dad retired as a captain out of 120, I believe. Okay. Into 120. So the way that happened was I was playing basketball on apparatus floor. They got a run. They all ran to the rig. And I ran to the rig, but obviously I didn't get on. Mm-hmm. So he looks at me, and he looks in the back. He looks at me and looks in the back and said, Get on the rig in the back. If you fall off, I don't know you. <laughs> he said, like, yeah. get on back and sit down. If you fall off, I don't know you. Yeah. And um, I sat down, and you talk about you thought you died and went to heaven. Yeah. And that's when them, them rigs were loud as hell. Yeah. The engine, you know, just, you know, yeah. that's part of the whole. It was menacing. And, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the siren and the horn. I'm sitting there going, man, they get paid to do this? Yes. And the guy that was sitting next to me, the fireman, is by the name of John Brooks. That okay. you may, you know, he's a fireman at that time. Yep, I heard and, of know, him he, too. Yeah, he, he ended up becoming the fire commissioner. Yeah. So, um, like I said, that just kind of solidified, like, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so, soon thereafter, Mark Nielsen gets promoted to lieutenant. He's first district relief. And uh, we've always kept in touch. He gave me his, you know, his, his phone number, and I've always, I've always knew how to find out where he was going as a reliever. Because at the time, you just, you should just call the front phone of the firehouse. The first district at the time was Engine Forty Two. Mm-hmm. So I said, "Hey, you know, where's uh, Lieutenant Nelson?" And they tell me, "Okay." And he calls me one day and said, "Hey, you want to see how these guys really fight fires? Come to Engine Sixteen. Mm-hmm. Now I knew nothing about the South Side as far as the fire service. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't in the old 13th battalion, what we know now is the 18th battalion, I didn't think it existed. I'm like, ain't nobody doing nothing besides the West Side Fire, you know. Yeah. He's, he's, come to 16. Well, I don't know if you know what 16 used to be. Um, Is it where it's at now? Well, not, no. Not, no, no, no. Not where it's at now, but it's an old house over there. 40, 40 or 5 South Dearborn. Yeah, okay. Right. Yep. So that was when the projects were up and running. Yeah, because now it's all vacant lots. It's all vacant lots or new construction. Or new, well, that's Town a home. little further north. No, it's actually right in the same parking lot. Oh, yeah, you're right. Right, right next right, to right it. Right across the street. Because yeah, right some of the people door. who live there are parking in the old firehouse parking lot. Yes, you're right. You're right. Exactly. Yes. And, but let me, let me yeah, go ahead. interject one thing. That's like, well, it won't be a secret anymore. But I like want to buy that house because it's like oh. in the perfect place area that firehouse? yes it's call general services the fire department don't own the firehouse they call general services or call the alderman and there are some people who have it become private owners of old firehouses yeah that one right there it'd be That'd perfect be cool for me one. it's like kind of centerish of the city you close to the expressway a lot of black history of black firefighters mm-hmm. come out of that house it used to be i think a double engine house or a squad in that house but it's a lot of between that house and engine 19 is a lot of black history, particularly Chicago fire mm-hmm. department, black history come out of the house. There's a reporter. If you may recall, his name was Russ Ewing. Yeah. Russ Ewing used to be a fireman. Oh, I didn't know that. Out of engine 16's house. I did not know that. Yeah. So, I mean, I can, we have, I can go all day talking about not no, this fire department history, want. but Chicago history, man. No, I'm, I'm a that's big what, Chicago history buff. It's, it's ridiculous. That's what I wanted you for. So you know, that's part of the so, reason. Um, so I go to Engine 16, and you talk about a culture shock, man. Yeah, they them boys fall fires a different way. Yeah. So projects were high rises, mm-hmm. 
but they didn't have high rise amenities like I don't know a stand pipe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, some of you fight fires with it's like no, nah, you throwing this sucker out the window in the apartment next door or out the balcony, and that engineer got to know what he or she is doing, and you get down. And that's what I was about to just down. about to ask you because yeah, um, in my book I wrote about old um stuff that's used as actual stuff like okay. um for, for say for instance in the projects i always heard that they used to have a bowling ball attached to a string because when they would get for the incinerators fires, yeah for the for incinerators the and then they knock the knock the fire down they would drop the bowling ball pick it up drop it again things like that yeah yes okay so yes. that's that 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 actually happened that's if, true. yeah if you want to talk to a uh a current member who fought those fires? Uh, Captain Rayford of Engine Sixty Three was a fireman in Engine Sixteen. Okay, when it was the real Sixteen. The real Sixteen. Yeah, I should yeah, say the real. I don't want no disrespect to the new Sixteen, but the original Engine Sixteen. He was well, a fireman. Well, there. no, they. You I know. mean, places develop. Um, yeah, you know, they change gentrification, yeah, everything. Yeah. That just happens. That's yes. life. So no, it's it's no shade at all. Cause guess what? They still there doing the job. Yes, they and, are. They have their opportunities to fight for it. They're just not project high rise fires anymore. <laughs> right, right, right. And and the the dynamic of that house was that house used to run hard. Yeah. Then all of a sudden it just went slow. Yeah. When they started knocking down the projects and everything, it just fell off. Like, yeah. like like this is like unrecognizable slow. Like you go from 15 to 20 a day to two to three a day. Yeah, yeah. And then when they built the new house, it's back up in, I think, in the top 15, 20 rigs in the city. It's like, <laughs> like what happened? What happened? <laughs> like, right. what what happened? Yeah. Uh, see, that would be a really good study to look at, actually, if I had some time. They'd be like, what happened? I'm always interested about that. Um, I just had an opportunity to go to the OEMC. We got to visit Cool. And um, actually, just by luck of the draw, um, working, I got to see the airport, OEMC, and then a couple of days on my own shift, I got to see our uh, regular OEMC. Mm -hmm. And just seeing how they go about their business is just so interesting. Um, just how they figure out where to place rigs, put rigs in, who goes on what, why they going on what, what they would like to hear, what they don't really need is just right. really cool. So, right. Like you said, that 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 history there would be great to see why the numbers change so much. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then you have some houses that never change. Some houses that was always been slow, always, always going to be, be slow. slow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. It's just Chicago, it a big city. Well, Engine one twenty two was like that. Engine one twenty two. Number one right now. Yeah. Back then, they were nowhere near number one. Well, because of what the neighborhood was like. Chatham was, exactly. was not really doing nothing. People was over it was there. A, it was a middle class, working class, uh, African American community. Mm -hmm. And it was just, you know, just it was a different feel, a different community, a different culture over there. Yeah. And then it seems like overnight they go from doing two, three, four, five runs a day to an air popping. Average seventeen to eighteen runs a day. A day, yeah. And yeah. I have my theories as to why, but I don't want to like say this is the reason why. Right. But I just kind of feel like a lot of those people passed away. When they passed away, they kind of gave their houses to other people, other um, family members, and just not having to do anything other than be in the crib just kind of makes you not really take care of the crib. And right. It just kind of deteriorated from there. In my, like I said, that's just my opinion. I don't have anything to back that up. So, oh yeah, oh yeah. So back to sixteen. Yeah. So sixteen. Nelson told you. Yeah. Go to he 16. Said, come, come to sixteen, and, and I met. You know, I uh, met some new firemen. Uh, met some new friends. Then I went to the ultimate, which is something you will appreciate. Mm -hmm. He went to Squad One. Mm -hmm. Now uh, he used to go to the Squad a lot. Mark, uh, well, that's when Squad One used to run out of Engine Five's house. Yep. And the truck used to run out of Engine 18's house 18, yep. when 18 was on Roosevelt. Yep. And uh, he put me in a basket, and I'm like, man, this is high. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, this is high as hell. I, was like, I mean, we over the street lights almost. I'm like, man, this is crazy. Man, I wanted to go higher. That, uh, that, that, I, oh, I, I no, wanted. I was good. I was going to the roof line, maybe. I was like, I'm good. Yeah, that nah. dude was like, we can go all the way up. And I'm like, man, this before the song, all the way up? And I'm yeah. like, no, I was... <laughs> I'm like, man, this is crazy. But uh, 
But it was cool, man, you know, running. That's what Squad 1 used to, used to cover the entire West Side. Squad yeah. 2 did not cover the West Side at yeah. that time. We trying to, we you trying know, to, but I can tell you the politics that of why back. that happened. Well, the guy that was a, the the captain of Squad Two is now a big boss. Yeah. So I, I think he can whatever now. Yeah. You know, he was friends with a certain another a, another person. assistant deputy fire commissioner, and you know, <laughs> hey, when we were at the OEMC, we were asking, hey, how did this change from this to this to that to the other? Ooh. You know well, the story's well, kind of. Chief, well, he's retired now, so Chief Fox had a lot to do with that. Yeah, I, and another I, guy I won't that. name because he's still on the job. But yeah, it was. I got it from the horse's mouth on how that changed. Yeah, and 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 they didn't want to throw Squad Seven a bone out of O'Hare. They're like, man, you know, they're saying no, we could take care of all of that. They stare there, but they're like, well, come on, that's too far. Yeah, they're yeah. like, they want to go west of Manheim. Man, you on Pulaski? <laughs> <laughs> we can handle it, you we, know. Yep. Well, you know how we do. We we take. And I not was, just was squad people. Am I though, on second show, what, did, what did my old officer say? He says, uh, uh, "We could be second truck anywhere. We'll try to be first. Yep. That was <laughs> that was how I learned second how to drive. truck anywhere. We'll try to be first. Yep. <laughs> One, I'm so I'm disappointed, just mad because I was off on the detail. These dudes furthest west house you can be. In the city, yep. went all the way to the lake and had a save at the lake. They just had a change of quarters, went all cool. the way over to the lake. Talk to Yeah, um, when JB was still there as the captain, and they went all the way over there, got a rescue award and everything else. And, wow! And I'm off that day. I was, oh man, that was, well, that hurt my feelings. I don't know if they still do this, but a lot of West Side truck companies change quarters downtown. Um, truck thirty six. I, when I was at Truck thirty six, we went to Truck. Six once, and we stayed at truck three, three or four times on the chain, yeah. and truck one once. Yeah, truck thirty six is, and that's another thing that's so crazy about the city, and they, they determine who's gonna be like a big change truck. Cause truck twenty nine didn't change that often. We changed one time, and they everybody looked at me mad. I'm like, well, what I do? Right. You the candidate, and we gotta go somewhere. Cause like, like you. it's your fault. <laughs> right. I'm like, it's what? like they're trying to get you, they're trying to get you work. I don't even know what a change of quarters is. So, um. Right, I understand exactly what you're saying as far as uh, how, but truck 29 didn't change that often. But some truck, like truck 26, now they the busiest truck. Now they just a change truck, or no, they're the rich, rich truck. truck. They're That's the what rich they are. truck. They're the rich truck of life. <laughs> <laughs> they just go rich. Well, quite as kept. Engine 38 was a, a chain, big change company. Okay, and I didn't know that an old timer. Uh, uh, Mike Manchester was a relief lieutenant over there before he retired. Well, he was a captain, actually, when he retired. He told me, he says, uh, on the, um, the cover of the computer, you know, where the printer and stuff is, it was yeah. like these stickers, and they had like a quarter, a, a nickel, a penny. He go, you know what that is? I go, no, I just look like a, a penny, quarter. He goes, is it? Change company. Change company. I said, ah, oh, ah. He said, he said, see, see, you talk to the old timer. Yeah. It's, it is so cool talking to old timers because when they're not afraid to say they're an old timer, mm -hmm. and especially when they think they're teaching a young buck like me, mm -hmm. that makes them feel like purposeful. Yeah, right? absolutely. You know, you mind. And it's, I love talking to these old folks, man, old, yeah. old, these old timers. They, they, they give you a nugget. And you're like, okay. Yeah. Okay. And even if something, hear... even my tactics, I mean, just history. Yes. Yes. History and it make you appreciate, you know, like, like you know, we were saying about our friend Vinny. He says every almost every podcast, someone's always talking about the strike. The yep. strike comes up in almost every, every because we wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for those brothers and sisters who walk that picket line. Absolutely, you know, brotherhood of the barrel, man. Yep. You know, so you know we have a lot of debt to pay to them people. And mm -hmm. what's was very heroic about it, not just. Because we got a contract out of it, but there are stories where they would find out there's a structure fire nearby. They would stop walking the picket line, get in their cars, go, go to the fire, put it make out. a save, yep. put it out, and then go back to back strike. to the picket line. Yep, go back to strike. Now, how real is that? That's that's just, Th that's just, that, just if that ain't dedication. Yeah, I don't know what is. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what is, and um. I used to live on the 600 block of uh, North Ridgeway. If you stood on my porch and looked to the right, that's Engine 85's old firehouse. Mm -hmm. That was the first engine to the Arlington Angels fire. Mm -hmm. Well, we lost, I believe, 92 children and three adults. Mm -hmm. December 
second, nineteen fifty eight. Yep. And that was one of the houses where it used to be a courtyard. Uh, I should say courtyard, a multi-story, multi-unit apartment building right there on the corner of Ridgeway and I think it was that Ohio, where they had a fire. Mm-hmm. They were picketing, saw they had a fire, dropped their picket line and stuff, got whatever tools they had, went across the street, put the fire out, and came back. Dude, this. And, and so you think about that, and, and then you listen to the stuff that we griping about now. It's kind of like, ah, we don't have any problems. <laughs> That's what, you right. know, they, 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 a lot of guys um, have the saying, I never had a bad day on this job. Right. And that's They say some are better than others, but I never had a bad day on this right. job. Right. Some are better than others, but I never had a bad day. And I, I feel kind of the same way. Just a lot like about the attitude said, and perspective. A lot, a lot of, exactly. A lot of stuff we complain and gripe about. Um, mm-hmm. isn't stuff that we need to complain and gripe about. And the things we do need to complain and gripe about, we just comfortable with sometimes. <laughs> um, you know, that, that saying that 150 years of tradition impeded by progress or, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, I, I, I wish we could do things a little more new, but one day when I get up there, I'll shake some stuff up. I remind you. <laughs> I'll be answered to you. <laughs> no, no, I got a, I got a little ways to go. I got a lot of ways to go. But um, tell us more about. So one of the things that I do want to mention in this podcast, I just want to piggyback on the fact that you had the CBS two the special. Um, they oh. got to talk, talk with Mark Nielsen on camera. Right. Um, talked about how like you were walking past the house and everything you just kind of hey came in and they started taking care of you checking your grades mm-hmm. all that other kind of fun stuff so you are pretty much raised in the culture of a firehouse yes let me ask you this what differences do you think um come about now as opposed to when you were pretty much being raised in the firehouse the differences between now and then is uh Pride, um, I think that has kind of went away mm-hmm. uh, from what it used to be to what it is now. Mm-hmm. Uh, those guys really cared about the fire service. They cared about the firehouse. They cared about the fire engine. They cared about, you know, a lot of the things that today you just don't you don't see that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think respect, mm-hmm. you know, is a thing that's kind of. You know, that's kind of that's kind of falling off by the wayside too. Um, and I almost kind of want to say training, but back then they had a lot more fires, and you know, so the ego would kick in. Like, what are we training for? We do this, we do this for real we on do a regular, this regular basis. Regular. Yeah. And th- there's something to be said about that. Now, yeah. That doesn't mean they couldn't be more a little bit more efficient, maybe a little bit whatever. Mm-hmm. But the fire was out, and no one got hurt. So in their book, they were that's efficient enough, right? Yeah. yeah. Not to us, you know, but now when fires are down, can we still say that? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, you yeah. know. So, um, um, and then obviously you got the political aspect of things where you, some things you just, you just can't say, say where, or yeah, do. You can't say or do anymore. Yeah. That, that used to be welcome. You know, you have a lot more ladies in the fire service mm-hmm. now, you know, we are, uh, garnering uh, more uh, men and women, and that's of the LBGT community. So you gotta, you know, gotta be sensitive to their, uh, to to, to their feelings, mm-hmm. and, and 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 respect their, you know, their, their feelings and, and respect their decisions and whatever that may be. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, now, if you talk to some of the old school guys, or oh, they call us, you know. Soft and so on and so Sissy forth. Boy. Sissy boys, yeah, right? And, 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 to, yeah. and then to a certain to a certain respect, I get that. Yeah, but in another respect, it was needed. Yeah, some changes needed. I, I think some things should have never changed. Um, I always have a love for those older firehouses. Mm-hmm. You know, even a single engine. It's just something about the character of those firehouses that these new ones just can never come close to. Um, so. My favorite ones are kind of like the middle ground, or like the ones that built that were like I think in the sixties or seventies, the split level, like uh, like the engine one hundred seven, yep. engine twenty six, one hundred seventeen, yeah, one sixteen, like those, those houses, not too new, not too old, It's just right in the middle. Yeah, I got you. You on know, that. yep. So, um, so those are you know, 
some of the changes, you know, when you get different commissioners, you know, they got different visions and they have different, different agendas. agendas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, we have, remember that one commissioner where they came up with a 20 page uniform order. It's like, really? Yeah. yeah. You know, took the shorts away, you know, took the, everything with short sleeves. <laughs> it's like, what? Took the white shirts away. Took the white shirt. Now, that, I didn't like that. I still don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah. Uh, and that's not ego. I just think that I think the supervisor, the boss, whatever you want to say, need need to look distinguishable amongst the men because they are, you know, when, when you're on scene, um, people don't know what our ranks are. The, the, right, right. The crowd, you know, the public, the crowd. They just Everyone see knows the white shirt is a supervisor. Yep. That That is a common knowledge. He's a white shirt. Yeah. That must be the supervisor. Yeah. Um, you know, I heard the theory was on a, on a battleground. That's the reason why you know lieutenant colonels and commanders were the same, because the enemy don't know who's what. Well, I don't. Well, we're not in a battleground exactly. per se. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, per we're se, not. we're not. But it's like, come on. You that know. that kind of speaks to me of when um, we changed. The one color I do like now is the candidate shirts that have the orange writing. I mean, they're still blue, but they had an orange writing to kind of let you know. But we had candidates that were wearing a light blue shirt, and then they said, no, nah, they can't they wear them like shirts because they look officers. like police officers. Right. right. And so they came out with gray. And then after gray, now they have the navy, but with the orange writing. So I right. do agree with that. But like you said, we're not on a battleground to that extent where, like you said. They try to take the head out, take yeah. the leader out, and then so that the rest of the team will Don't know what to do. Right. Yeah, nah. And then, I didn't been in fires with an officer who went down, the fireman just keep on working right along. Because, I <laughs> yeah. mean, you, you know what you're doing. You, you're... Some things you don't need direction on how to do. A lot of things you do. Right. But some things you should be able to conduct and yeah. do on your own. And see, and I have the 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 privilege and the uh the experience of both big town city chicago fire service mm-hmm. and small suburbia mm-hmm. you know so I, we work in chicago which is just under three million mm-hmm. and i worked in a town that was just barely over five thousand mm-hmm. and you talk about night and day yeah it is it is night and day but the fire still burn the same way. Yep. Fire science is still the same. Yep. Go the construction is still the same. Mm-hmm. But you don't get the same manpower. You don't have the same equipment. Yep. Uh, it is. It is. Much respect to the suburban fires because, and you know, in all reality, they do the same thing we do with a fraction of the people. Yes. On our floor, still, we got nothing under twenty guys on the on the scene. Right. We got guys that. I mean, even if every company there. on the variance except for the squad, you still got. 20 firefighters. Yep. In a, in a single story, one in a, in a one and a half story bungalow. Yep. Out there, and for you to get 20 guys, you know, you almost got 15 pieces of equipment because you're averaging three, two, sometimes, three, and sometimes two guys per rig. Right. That And that's what I was about to yeah. say. My um old department from back home, um, we had a truck company that was just two people. And then we had the Ambo. We called them squads back then, but they would meet up from wherever they were out doing a run. And marry the truck. And meet up with the truck. Then you would have four. But if they own uh, full of rest, hey, we got to re re get all the stuff, and we might miss that. Right. So you got two people just getting the truck there. And that's so dangerous in some aspects, but to this well, day, nobody's well, at that point, got hurt. Some of the suburbs, they don't. They don't prioritize uh, vertical ventilation. They, right. For one, they don't have the manpower. We didn't have the manpower. So um, we would do horizontal ventilation. Like those fans that we just got now. Those are PPV fans? Yeah, we had those, and we would put them at the front door. Um, after we found the fire, put most of the fire out, then we would open up all the windows and pressurize the house. But no vertical ventilation. If I'm not mistaken, I think New York first truck do not they don't, go to the roof. Yeah. I think that second truck do, if yep. need be. Yeah, a lot of um, a lot of places are getting away from that, and I can see from some of the safety aspect. But I feel if the fire like fires are on the top floor. Do you really? If you got a because you're two drawing or three story, it. right? If you got yeah. a two or three story structure, the fires on the first floor. Why are we making a roof? Yeah, but at the same time, I feel like that's kind of handicapping us as firefighters. It's like giving us. It's like it's like saying we're not good enough to do our job in some aspects. Mm-hmm. I understand the safety point, and I'm with safety all day, all night. We can talk safety to death, 
But I feel like saying it's kind of like you handicapping the police now with some of the stuff that's going on in the city. Like they're not allowed to chase and do things like that. Right. And that's when the politics comes in. And now you, now you got issues. Yeah. You know, so. But yeah, man, that's. Um, so uh, what was I? So I I was at Inter 16, a paramedic by the name of Phil Mastriano said, hey. What do you think about this ambulance stuff? Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to get on anything that was going out the door. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, like I was that. like, yeah, that's good. I want it, man. If you're going out the door, I want to be on it. You license siren, I want to be on it. So I, I rode at uh, Ambulance 35. Okay. And so he said, listen, take my name. Now, this is when, how can I put this? This is when I found out what name dropping and having some clout and having a phone call me. But I didn't know it at the time. At the time, I was just doing what I was told. Yeah. So I went to Malcolm X College. I went and saw this guy, he says, and he was specific. I'd never forget it. Talked to this guy, this guy only. He said, do you do you understand me? I went, yes. Okay, I'm like, why is he so... <laughs> do you but hear I the get words it, that are coming out of my mouth? mouth right? <laughs> so I went and talked to that guy. Yeah. And I did and said exactly what he told me. And I, I remember like it was yesterday, Sev, that dude looked up at me and said, oh, so you one of those guys. Mm. And I didn't know what he what meant. You, this yeah, is a white yeah. guy standing this to me. And I'm thinking, is he? What's that supposed, supposed to mean? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but he looked at me and laughed. And I think I said something, well, what are you talking about? Mm. He go, and he said to me, you'll understand later. I'm like, uh, oh, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Next thing I was registered for EMT. Okay. And, you know, so I was in high school. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even supposed to. One of the requirements is high school high grad. High school graduate, yeah. I was, I was a, a, a senior. Mm-hmm. So that was a, that was a, that was a call, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. So here I am doing my schoolwork, barely. I was studying for EMT. Yeah. Like I had my EMT book, and, yeah. you know. And later on, my English instructor told me uh, she knew exactly what I was doing, mm-hmm. and she couldn't. On the surface, okay, it, mm-hmm. but she said she was proud of me. Yeah, that's you awesome. Know, that's yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, Miss Wilcliffe, I went to Hubbard High School, and she says, I knew exactly. She said, I saw the book. Mm-hmm. She said, I knew you weren't doing your work. I knew you had somebody else doing the work, but I knew you were going to end up being something, and I just I just let it rush. I gave you a hard time because I was, she said, because I, you know, I was supposed to, but I knew you were going to make it. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was really a heartwarming, right? Mm-hmm. So I um, go to EMT school. I was late. I had I I didn't I wasn't driving yet. I was late to the state exam, so I couldn't take it. Mm. Then I, I then I made another appointment, failed the first test. I'm like, is this for me or what? So I got in a, a, a third time, because the first time I was late, the second time I failed, the third time I passed. Okay. So now you know, work on the privates. Then you know, I went to paramedic school. I went to Highland Park uh, paramedic program. Mm-hmm. Put my name on the list like everybody else. And then nine years later, I came on the private car. Nine years later? Nine years. Wow. I think it was nine years later, right? Yeah. Yeah, I got my license and I got my medic ni- license in 96. I got hired in 05. That is some time to hang out. That's what's up. Oh, yeah. That's that's some real life I worked, 12, I, I worked 12 years on a private total. Okay. Two or three years in EMT. The other nine was as a paramedic. Okay. Well, that's 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 stellar. Um, to kind of hang out for that long. I know a lot of people talk about how long they had to wait for the job to come through and everything mm-hmm. else. And you like really, really, really waited the time and and got it going. So that's that's great to hear. Now you said you started off on ten. Ten, yeah, super busy. West Side, and you kind of knew where you was going and everything. Um, then and then hold on. You only had to do a year and some change before you crossed. These well, dudes so now are like five years. I was lucky because there was all. So for the longest. All right. So you remember. So there's a misnomer out there for some people. Crossovers still have to take the entrance exam. Yes. Like everybody else. Yes. There is this misnomer that crossovers didn't even have to take the test. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. So I, I, I wanted to spell that. Yes. You, every crossover paramedic. Had have taken and passed the entrance exam like everybody else. Mm-hmm. You just placed essentially on two lists: right. the civilian list, like everybody else, and the crossover list. Yes, right. So whichever came first is the one you took. Mm-hmm. So 
I came on in 2005, mm-hmm. right? The test that we took to get on the job came was when? 95. Right. So that list was already 10 years old. Yeah. So they were already crossing over people for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And they gave that next firefighter's exam, I think they the next year. So by the time I came on, they were at the bottom of that crossover list. Okay. So it was, in reality, had I crossed over at my first opportunity, had I not got hurt at the academy, I would have only done nine months on the ambulance. Okay, wow. Now, it was several of us and my classmates. Uh, so I got hurt. I went back on the ambulance for three months, and I went back in the next fire class. Mm-hmm. My last day on, on as a single role medic was Easter Sunday, uh, 2006. Okay. And that was on Amos 30. Mm-hmm. Had a beautiful day. Got my ass kicked that night. <laughs> you know. Um, so that's why it only it was only a year. The longest time I known somebody uh, the cross, I believe, was Keith Gansel. He ended up retiring as a lieutenant. I think at Tower 14. He did yep. 17 years on an ambulance. Yep. I remember seeing his Good sheet. Good dude. And in excellent shape. Yeah. And he used to say he he was in the projects on the ambulance. He said I used to love eating a big spaghetti dinner and then got to climb up to the tenth and fourteenth floor on an ambulance call, work that cardio. I go, man, you crazy? I've been throwing up, man. (laughs) (laughs) You know, uh, yeah, Keith. I believe Keith Gansel did about seven, if I'm not mistaken, if memory serves me correct. He did seventeen years where he crossed. Yep, he was on the um, third shift, like you said, Tower Fourteen. When I was um, in the thirteenth. Now 18th. Hey, yeah, I, I still can't get my head wrapped around it. Yeah, man. I remember the chief at the time when it happened. Oh, my goodness. He didn't know what to do with his On son. your shift? No, on the second shift. Oh, oh, that was... Um, Timothy. Mike Timothy. Yeah. Oh, he, yeah. Oh, man. He, his son's on the job now. I know. Truck 26. I have a story about him. His son? Yeah, not a bad story. It's oh. just a cool story. Um, just well, like It's like he, a ring, like Sean O'Neill... Had his kid, you know. His yeah, kids on the job. I mean, it was you know, Mark Nelson got his, you know, they. I, I should say got their kids are on a job. They got it themselves, you know. Yeah, Mike but Timothy in it, so it is. I mean, hey, man, you can't, like awesome. daily say, you can't take care of your family. Who, who can else you take care? <laughs> of? Who can you right. take care of, man? No, you I know? mean, I wish I would have had that, and oh, I hope yeah. to be able to do the same thing for my son one day if that's what he chooses to do. Right. But I remember I went to a fire, and it's this kid running around. <laughs> In the fire building? In the fire building. <laughs> why Why are we putting out the that fire? That used to be me, Sam. And I know, you know that's I what I'm care, saying. Man. That used to be me. And and I see him, and I'm like, who is that? Oh, that's the, the Jesus. Oh, okay. Um, Later on, it was after I left the academy, but I saw him, and I saw his name. I'm like, oh, I know this dude. I know him, but he don't know me. So, right, right, right. <laughs> but it, it was all good. And, and, and just getting that experience for you is just so awesome. You remind me a lot of the guy who gave me my first shot, um, my first chief, and all he used to tell me about um, was fire stories from Cleveland. How he used to ride on the back of the rig. Um, he used to walk by every day. Hey, let me in. Mm-hmm. All this other stuff, and it's just such a beautiful thing to see. Well, and said, then yeah, the well, fact you said that backstab that remind me of a story with Milk Davenport. We were. Um, Checking hydrants, mm-hmm. and you know what we do. You know what we uh, let me say what we used, used to, do, to do, quote unquote. Yeah, you rode the back step because it was the pain, you know, getting in and out the rig. Yeah. So uh, this one particular time is Milk Davenport, myself, and uh, battalion chief named Chief Malahi. He was the fourth battalion, mm-hmm. and he just so happened to be in the area, and. He gets on the back step. It was always been illegal to do it, right? Yes, yes. And so we're bouncing up and down, and the chief looks at Milt that point and goes, say, you know we shouldn't be back here. <laughs> and Milt said, we're back here now, chief. <laughs> right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, it's like he's saying, you know we shouldn't be back here, but he's back there with him because yeah. he remember when he was a fireman, like probably like in the 60s yeah, and 70s, right? So that's why it's good to get these chiefs who still got somewhat their foot on the ground who understand the rules. I mean, you know, you for you at least educate your men about the rules, but you also don't forget where you come from. That's the thing. Don't forget where don't you come from. Don't forget where you came from. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, I'm still a medic. I mean, I would never, that's that's something I work for myself. Still got my medic license. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't use it so much in the city, but when it's time to get down, I'm the for me. I just started an IV uh like a couple of weeks ago on 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 a patient we had or an overdose patient. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and the thing is the one FPM didn't know me. 
her partner is there. We worked in the privates together, so okay. she knew I was a medic. Mm-hmm. So, and I had the field chief there who I worked with on AMS 15, J.D. Giovanni. Okay, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So him and I worked together a couple of times. So she couldn't get the line. I get down there, and I said, hand me an 18. And she looked at me. <laughs> like, who and is I said, this dude? I said, hand me an 18 gauge. Mm. And she handed me a tourniquet. I said, I don't need a tourniquet. Just give me the 18 gauge. And she looking, and she looking at her partner. Her partner didn't. She just, give him the 18. Give him the 18. <laughs> <laughs> so give me the 18. Got a line. And then I said, hey, hey, give me give me the Narcan. And and then her partner was being funny. She said, did you get it? I said, are you serious? She right. said, I'm sorry, Lou. Well, yeah. We're not used to lieutenants getting down there. And then her partner was like, I didn't know. And then the chief's like, yeah, Antoine, we spent some time with that ambulance together. Yeah. She said, oh, I didn't know you were a medic. We're not used to that. And I go, hey. It's time this man went breathing. <laughs> it's, right, you know, it's all you gotta, hands on deck, man. Exactly. You know, you got a paramedic license. That's what we're here to do: save the people, man. So, got to get in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. This, I mean, that's why you know I went to school. That's the reason why, you know, I, some of the administration of it I don't agree with. That's so why I'm like, okay, let me step out of this program. But mm-hmm. when it's time, you still got to do what I the still state. Gotta, right, I'm still doing. I'm licensed. To allows do. you to, exactly. Oh yeah. Exactly. Oh yeah. yeah I, it's a good tool to have. Man. I know um, all too well. So right. That's right. You, I, that's right. Truck Twin has the ALS, so I'm sure you you seen a, a thing or two or three. Yeah. We we was yeah. So <laughs> just leave it at that. Right. Right. So now you're to the point. Um, you're a lieutenant on a job. You're in the fifth district. A great. Mm place like i said it's no really bad place to be but mm-hmm. you down there with a few more fires and everything i was an else. engineer too yeah oh you know what i'm sorry i skipped <clears throat> over that part no no i'm sorry no not no, give you, good not give you your engineer flowers so <laughs> yeah engineer for uh just under three years and then um i was uh uh promoted uh april of last year okay and now you study 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 Study, study, study. And study, and study some more. Cause you, and study some more yeah. on top of all of that. Because like you told me, you said, I'm trying to be on the front first page. First page, trying to be number one. I'm with that. I am all the way with that. First That's page, what I was like one. for lieutenant. They looking at me like I was crazy. No, I'm I'm getting it in on this study. So, oh, yeah. Um, one thing that you always say, and, and I, I see you say online, is that some of the rules are so not redundant but and not repetitive, but contradictory. They, yes. they contradict each oh, other. Oh my god, that drives me crazy. So yeah. um just what would be something you would do to kind of right that ship if you could? Well, first I would so and I hate comparing us. To that one other city that's just east of us, yes, on that's, the coast, that's that's big, that's, that's, that's real big, yeah, like, <laughs> like number two in the country, yeah. You got their letters F D and Y on the side of their ridge, yeah. um, but they they have a, a, a um, research and development team of about I think 10, 12, 15 people. Mm-hmm. We have two, maybe yes. three, and they're not really doing really R and D per se. Um, what needs to be done is someone needs to scour our entire catalog of directives, like really page by page um, and edit, delete, take out, do whatever you got to do, but it it needs to be somewhat totally. So like when you go to a home and you rehab a home, right? You still need a sink. You still need a bathroom, whatever, but it's updated. Mm -hmm. You still need the essentials. We still need, General orders, we still need the operations orders on us, so, but it just need to be updated. updated. Yes. Right? It needs to be updated. Um, why the hell are they putting on our source reading materials for for promotional exams on training bulletins that was written in 1988? I uh, know. It's still on there. It's still on there. Something yes. like the boss tool. Why are we talking about the boss tool? Why are we talking about blocking chains? Yes. It's like, first of all, it's on no one's inventory. Did you have that in Truck 29? No. You probably still had it, but it wasn't being used, right? No, no, no. Right. You know, uh, some stuff is this cute, like the shepherd hook. Yes. I mean, okay, right, right. It's t- the, the chain is 12 inches long. Don't ask me how I still remember that. It's, <laughs> hey, it's all good. You know, you know, the, you know, you know all that nonsense. You, you know, know how to um, wrap, the, wrap, the, um, <clears throat> wrap the rope properly. And then oh, on the uh, the the work rope, yes, on the two pipes that come yes. out, yeah, the yeah. perpendicular to the wall, yep, yeah, I know how to do that. That was a big that, Mark Nelson thing. That's a that's an order as well. Yeah, that, it is an order. Um, yeah, it's an order about why the 
the the the genesis of the green and red lights from the firehouses and on the red. Yes. Yep. It's about uh, Commissioner Albright, because it's I think his family owned a, a shipping, shipping company. Shipping company. <laughs> yeah. They're like the red and it's the, the red a and port green. And star or whatever. I'm like, wow. Yep. Um, it's an order on marking tarps, even though that's something we still do and supposed to do. And on oh, oh, the salvage covers. Yes. Yep. It's it's twelve an by order. eighteen, fourteen by eighteen. See, look at that. Ooh. <laughs> But wash with cold water. Yep, and, and that's what I'm saying. It's order, but somebody right. needs to, like you said, go through right. That you need to kind of go through it, and you know, really put some, you know, give it a good solid year because you and to do it right, you probably need a solid year. And if you got like five solid guys, smart guys, guy who's not gonna just you know just want to get you know going out there for the bump and pay and for mm-hmm. the white shirt and whatever mm-hmm. or just want to duck the firehouse. No. Some really you know, probably some academics, you mm-hmm. know, probably some nerd guys who like, you know, like to read this stuff. Mm-hmm. You do general orders, you do operations order, you do special directors or whatever. The only thing that's updated are the SOPs. Yes. And that came about because we were forced to Federal, do that. Federal yeah. We were forced to do that, I believe. Yes. Um I forgot what incident. We were like, you guys don't have SOPs? Okay, you guys need SOPs. Yeah. It's like, so, um, SOPs are pretty, pretty, um, you're pr- pretty good. But, yeah, so, and I'll go back and forth and i say his name because he knows I tease him all the time. Retired Deputy Fire Commissioner Les Noy. Mm-hmm. He wrote some of that stuff. You mm-hmm. see me, I tag him all the time. I I text him and go, I'm going to get you on this one. Why Why is this this? Right. Yeah. And he'll give me some political answer if you see that. Or he'll say, I didn't write that one. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't write that one. And I go, why do I need to know the tick camera can read one eight inch below water? Why, why do I need? I said, who measured that? Yeah, you're right. Who, <laughs> who, who put the ruler that? in the water and right. said, who I can't see that? this no more? And I'm sure that came from the manufacturer. I'm sure. Yes. You know, I'm sure. Yeah, you the know, manual. Right. right. From the manual or whatever. But it's just, when I get frustrated, I just, you know. Well, you know, we bring that out on the water incidents, and we got to right. check the water. For right. You, you do, like right on the spot, cases. right. Yep. And the so. big controversy is how many times do you turn a hydrant? It's 13. How many times? It's written as high as 13 and as low as 8. Yeah. The, the answer is 8. Okay. I knew 13. Don't turn it no more than that because if right. you do, it's going to drop off and drop right. down. Right. So it's 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 eight. That's so the correct answer. I just turned it enough to get water. But you know exactly. what? Exactly. Uh, I, I tell this story and then we'll get ready to get you out of here. No, but, I got um, time. I got time. I was the medic on Truck 29 for forever. I never got to go anywhere because I was the, the medic, medic on right. Truck 29. Right. I uh, um, downgraded to be an EMT with the city, and so now I'm getting thrown into the detail pool. I go to 95 for my first detail. Wait, you downgraded your status? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Just just, just with the city. Right. So um, I go to 95, my first detail. I haven't made a hydrant other than... <laughs> since the academy. Since the academy. <laughs> and they put you in a hydrant? And that's about eight, nine years, and they put right. me on the hydrant. You know, I almost drowned myself trying to make this hydrant because they had a fire going for real. And I didn't do something right. I don't think I put the um, threads on. I cross-threaded it. And that water was just spraying me. In. Oh, it was killing me. And I held my breath and made sure that I got them that water to that fire. But I almost drowned myself doing it. So. I don't the hell I'm going to do the death. Yeah. How you went? Oh, was he inside? No, he was no, at the hydrant. At what? The hydrant. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine reading that obituary. Oh yeah. my God. I, I, like I said, I held my breath and just put my face in there. I said, Well, it's water. And I was in there. So yeah. it, but that's, you know, my fault. That's that's yeah. part of that thing that you, you we were talking about, that training and everything else. But Yeah. So, you know, I when people ask me about, you know, how did you become a fireman and why did you I, I said, I'm when people say living the dream, you know, one of the things we always say in the fire department is just living, living the dream. Living the dream. And we say yeah. it half sarcastically like tongue in cheek. Yeah. That is a literal sentiment. And I mean it wholeheartedly when I say I am literally literally living a childhood dream. Yeah. That's and that and awesome. you know, I'm blessed to say that cuz not many people could say that. Yeah. A lot of us are going to work to to earn a living. Mhm. Not many of us uh, you know, like what like the call over Winfrey, but she says, you know, if you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. Yeah. And, just, I don't know if she came over there, but that's the first person I heard. If you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. And that's something I feel like we got to instill a bit more into our younger generation of firefighters. Yeah, man, it's 
Seth is falling off. Um, so, you know, you got Chicago, obviously. But then you got your other realms of fire service. So, like, Orland Park Fire Department, Fire Protection District is considered one of the top-tier departments outside the city. Mm -hmm. And they used to have, you know, a couple thousand show up to the exams. Uh, I talk, I know the chief very well. He told me, um, I think they had 85. Mm. 85. Mm. And they hired 15. I think he told me right, 12 or 15 right away. Oh, my God. Some departments, I've told, nobody showed up. Wow. One department, someone told me 10 people. It's like, whoa, what is going on? And the paramedic shortage is even worse. We, it's even not worse. just us. And I got to say it for our... Dead. We abuse our paramedics. Yeah. This city, they abuse paramedics. I'm a, a lot of it is legal, not even political, just straight legal reasons why paramedics get abused. And I remember I was working with um, Tom Kalicki. Where is it? Kalicki. Kalicki. He passed away. Kalicki. Um, he had, he, I worked with him. He, he was from Cleveland, too. And he, like, knew a bunch of old Cleveland history. And he was a uh, paramedic here. And I got a chance to work with him on Ambulance 23. It was a great day. Um, not because we were slow or anything. It was 23. But right. <laughs> we just, he was just a really good guy to talk to, pick his brain and everything else. And I said, I think medics should only work 12-hour um, shifts. Kind of like how they did Cleveland EMS right. and fire are different. Um, different entities and they don't work 12 they work 10 so they work something different point is i said because you know after a certain time you're not even conscious anymore you well, just they said like truck drivers can drive no more than like, what 16 hours straight at a time because then they say you are you are operating almost you're under the influence because you're just that tired and that's what i'm and saying here we about are doing the medics. every better 24 hours and they doing two 24s because if they get mandatory they're going 48 off 48 48 off 48 and uh, they get abused Hammered. in but, a way that's but not you got to have the rigs and search so it's kind of at a management standpoint because I, I try to look at things from both lenses yes absolutely i look at the, Obviously, I'm going to look at the lens of the rank and file because that's what I am. Mm -hmm. But I also try to look at it as a manager because that's what I aspire to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, before you start pointing the finger, what kind of predicament are they in? Mm -hmm. Do you just start down in ambulances? What, right. What you going to do? What's the alternative, right? Yeah. Um, you know, the only alternative, in my opinion, is uh, you probably got to start down great in fire companies. Yeah. Uh, well, I ALS think they got to hire, hire more. But they don't have more to and, hire. And you they don't have more to hire. But I feel like Chicago's still a great enough city where they can put out a nation that's how I got here, a nationwide call. Hey, come take this test. I told one particular former commissioner, not the current, I said, That's I, I said something similar to that. I said, What you should do is go to the you know, department and he said, I'll have every fire chief in the Chicago medicine in the Chicago metropolitan area, hate me if I did that. Cause you'd be stealing. Well, forget their Chicago. Medics. I'm talking about go from <clears throat> here to California, here to Montana, here to North Dakota, here out south to Texas. I'm just saying, send recruitment trips and like a nationwide call. Hey, we are looking yeah. for people. We are actively hiring. Uh, Chicago's not broke. It's cranes all over the sky. Um. Before COVID hit, we were the number one tourist destination in the United States, one of the top in the world. Right. And that's dollars coming in. And I still drive up and down Michigan Ave. I can't get nowhere because there's traffic everywhere, but I see right. a ton of people outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean. They didn't make some changes. They don't, want, they don't want to get rid of residency because I was. That's uh, going to poop the housing market. Well, the housing and this revenue period from, I was told from a, because, um, you know, I'm. I'm a speechwriter as well on the side. I'm mm -hmm. gonna put, you know, do some political consulting. Mm -hmm. This one political candidate told me, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago or so, where the middle class in Chicago was 50%. Mm -hmm. Now it's down to 15%. Mm -hmm. And half of that 15 are city workers. Oh, uh, yep. So half of your middle class, half of your entire middle class are city workers. So imagine if you let them city workers that are bound to be in Chicago, you let them out. We have a problem. Yes. That would be a financial problem if, if that statistic is true. And I said, okay, now that I see why they don't want to. Oh, no, I wouldn't want to get it. rid of it either. I'd, I'd be holding on to it for dear life. But it's, 
What do we do, right? Exactly. What do you do? So I'm, a lot of things need to change. And I'm reading a few books about leadership and everything. And one of the biggest things that I emphasize is don't just come up with problems and say this is wrong. Come up with a solution, at least one. Or right. we say, you know, this is broke, but maybe we can fix it like this. Your answer could be wrong as ever, but at least come up with something. Right. So. Do you ever sit back and and think about, you know, how long you've been on the job and think about the unfortunate how many line of duty deaths that you have witnessed as far as, you know, since you've been on a job and how many firehouses have closed and yeah. how many new units. It's really something. You know, I, I sit back and think about that and – I'm, I'm proud to say that I was assigned to Truck 24 mm -hmm. before they became Tower 24 when they were the last single truck, truck in the city. In the city, yeah, that's yeah. That's to me. That was like okay, that's dope. That is dope. <laughs> that's and dope. the kitchen was upstairs. And the kitchen was upstairs. <laughs> How real is that? No that's engine, the, you know, yep, no, no engine. engine. He had an Ambo. He had Ambo 29. Yep. And uh, that's that was probably arguably my best assignment. It was Truck 24. You. <laughs> We got all those fires and rolls in second truck, the truck twenty seven. But yes, I, you know, and yeah, man. So it's it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. Truck twenty four and truck thirty six. Man, I went back and forth between the south side and west side. I still couldn't figure it out because I, I like both sides. Yeah, I did a stint downtown too. First it, district relief. It's 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 crazy that I, on the podcast with Daryl, I was just saying it's just so crazy how people from out west ain't been out south, and people from out south ain't, ain't been, been out west. Out west. <laughs> <laughs> and got different accents. It's crazy. Right, so, right. But we, we got to get going. Um, I, I didn't want to keep you for too, too long. Oh, got man, just under it. an hour. So <laughs> we could go on forever. And this is another one of those times where this might be a part two or, a, or come up sure, and we can do it another about time. Sure, we the history of Chicago. Yeah. The fire, history of the fire department. Yeah, that's what. That's pretty deep. That's, that's actually a podcast I'm trying to put together. It's a guy I know he knows about just all kind of stuff. And he just retired too, so I'm going to see if I can get him. Yeah. Um, Mike Burns. Oh, um, retired battalion chief. Yeah. He was, funny you say that, he was my officer at my first, uh, basically one of my first fires as a, as a firefighter when I crossed over. Mm -hmm. On a variance. <laughs> on a variance. 10 uh -huh. degrees below zero, 2.30 in the morning on 19th and uh, 19th in Pulaski. Mm -hmm. And lost my helmet. It was the worst fire I had in my career so far. Oh, well, don't top it. <laughs> right, exactly right not compared no, to you i mean your your no, story is oh my you know what God, i don't think man. i ever told that story on the podcast we really spoke, yeah I, i'm not gonna tell it today so it'll be another yeah, time yeah man that, <laughs> not compared to your story but it was i don't know you don't know i don't know if you know dan lynch it was dan lynch and i yeah and romeo I king yep I romeo know. king was on squad too he took that cross leg and i was like man that fire was oh man it was That'd be a part two. We'll yep. talk about that. We'll talk about a part two. We're going we to do a just, cool Tell him I said hi. <laughs> a just, a just, just history one. So, Oh, yeah. All right. Well, Antoine, thanks again for thanks coming for through. Me. No, thank you. Th thank you. Thanks go all the way around. So <laughs> you have a great rest of your day. And for listeners, reach out, talk to us, send us messages any way <laughs> you can by, nail, by snail mail, by pigeon, by bird. Telegraph. Um, we just telegraph. Um, do the dot Chicago system. Do, 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 right. do, 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 do. Yeah, Morris Cole. Reach out to us and let us know what you think, what you'd like to hear. Anything I can do better? Anything I can do worse? Probably can't get any worse. But <laughs> <laughs> all right. With that being said, we we'll talk to you later. Bye.